Hello my little beauties, it's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire. I just lost a client. Just lost a client. And it does not happen every day. I've been in this game since 1996. And uh, you could probably count on one hand the amount of times that I've lost clients, certainly in this ungraceful manner. And I wanted to do a video where I explain to you guys what has happened. And I want this to be a message and kind of like a word of warning to anyone who is a commercial web developer. If you're an employee, you don't need to listen to this. But if you run an agency, or if you're a freelancer, or if you're doing any kind of transactions that involve you building a site for someone, then you need to hear this message. I'm also going to send this message to the client for transparency and indeed I'm going to give this message to every single person who hires me in the future. You don't get to hire me unless you make a rather bold and seemingly outrageous agreement that I'm going to tell you about in a minute. So let's talk about what went wrong. Well, first of all, have you ever built a site for someone and they've went on and made millions? Have you ever done it? I've done it. And anyone who is a regular of this channel, you will know I've often name dropped companies like First Vehicle Leasing, for example, who started in a porter cabin in the East End and ended up one of the biggest car leasing companies in Europe bringing in, well, I shouldn't say numbers and be ungraceful, but millions per year. I've had that experience maybe about five times, and it's nice. It's nice when it happens. Now, let me tell you what happens when you build sites for small businesses or people who are just starting off, and they end up becoming super, super, super successful. First thing you need to know is it's actually quite common don't think that this guy is some special, unique rock star. I have plenty of web developer friends who have had similar experiences. Many of you will have built sites that have gone on and made fortunes. It's just, it's a glorious industry. I love it. So, you know, I'm not out here to try and impress people or dazzle people, right? But for those who have not had that experience yet, if you've not had that experience, let me tell you what happens. This is really interesting. And there's people watching this that are going to say, yep, yeah, that's familiar. So here's what happens. First of all, anyone who knows me, my email address is david.webguy, right? david.webguy at gmail.com. I've got 39,000 unopened emails, so what difference does a few more make? The reason why my email address is David, did something fly behind me there? Anyway, is that dust? I think that's dust. That's not an insect. Anyway, the reason why, very strange, the reason why my email address is david.webguy is because when you go in with an upstart or some company that's starting from square one, you tend to be not the developer, but the web guy. I say the word guy interchangeably, right? Guy, gal. But you do everything. You do the design. You do the development. You do the usability. You do the SEO. You do the AB split testing. Sometimes you do the SEO, the AdWords, and the analytics. And that's just the beginning. So you do everything. And then what happens is when the company gets a glimpse of success remarkably early on in the process, the business owner invariably wakes up one day and has a great idea, a genius idea. You see, instead of saying, that's an exceptionally talented web guy that I've got there, wow! Maybe I can recognize the outstanding talent. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen. What does happen, and let's all say it together, they say to themselves, 
I'm going to hire, you guessed it, another, right? Okay. So everybody's a genius. Everybody's the next whatever insert name of successful person. And so the small business owners say, I'm going to hire another. You know, worked out good with that guy. Maybe I'll just hire another. So this is what happens. And when they hire another, almost always, they do so without telling the developer. Because if they tell the developer, if they let the developer in on that, then there's a sense that the developer might get a foothold and, you know, who knows? Maybe the developer's going to do something uncool, you know? Claim ownership or something, who knows, right? So they head off on their own and they get another developer or maybe it's another designer or an AdWords company or whatever. And then one day you turn up as the original developer and you turn up and the site owner says, here's Chico. Chico's the new designer or Chico's the new AdWords guy or Chico's the new social media, whatever. This is Chico. David meet Chico. Chico meet David. And suddenly, you are no longer the web guy. You're kind of like the web builder guy. Chico does Facebook or something, whatever, you know. And then, as the site becomes more and more successful, and it's a process that can sometimes take five years, but somebody else will come in, and somebody else, and somebody else, and somebody else. And as other IT professionals come in, your role gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Before you know it, you're not even allowed to talk about the design. There's somebody else doing that, or maybe even another company. You're not allowed to talk about headlines that convert, or usability, or anything, because there's companies that do that. You're certainly not allowed to talk about AdWords. And so what happens is this process of kind of like narrowing the focus of what you do. So in the case of first vehicle leasing, when I came on board, they um, had, you know, a seven page site or something. Within three months, they had a 12,000 page site, thanks to this guy. Uh, and I did everything, the design, the headlines, everything. The reason why the car company Saab went out of business is because of me. I found an anomaly on a database. There was a bunch of uh, cheap Saab deals being, uh, correction, I didn't find it. It was the manager, a great friend of mine and a genius by the name of Andy Bell. He discovered an anomaly on a database and it was these incredible 40 grand Saab cars. And uh, he said, chuck them on the site. And I did. And I designed the site. And I did the text. And I did everything. And sold 1,600 brand new luxury Saab cars. It's a pretty good touchdown, right? Uh, unfortunately, when those leases expired, the marketplace got flooded with, you know, 1,600 Sabs, which drove the price of Sabs through the floor, and a billion dollar company went out of business because of that. Now, to go back to the point, if you take that as an example, and by the way, they stood by me for 14 years, great company, great people, I love them. In fact, um, I'll never refuse them a bowl of soup because they paid me a fair price for a fair job, it's fine. Now, if you take an example like that, when I went in there originally, I'm doing everything. I'm the web guy. I do the text, the headlines, the picture, you name it. But by the end of that process, pardon me, by the end of all of that process, like 14 years later, all I'm doing is like, the software for the call center, and it's like a tiny part of the, jigsaw and suddenly there's all other companies and all sorts doing the other stuff that's it that's web development that's normal now the good news is the great news is most developers are cool most it people are cool they're just out there they have to make a living 
And over the years, I've had the privilege of working with some of the best IT people on the planet. When Bill Gates woke up one day and said, I'm going to build a search engine and compete against Google, we now know that search engine is Bing. Originally, it was called MSN. When Bill Gates made that decision, the first move he made is he hired six of the best SEO experts on the planet Earth. One of those experts is a gentleman by the name of Matt Paines. Matt Paines, last time I spoke to him, he was inside Google. I have a direct line to Google, yes, ladies and gentlemen. He's the guy who taught me about how the search engines worked and what a privilege. And funnily enough, it's the only time I've ever met somebody and I've been intimidated because there's this intellectual force just on another level. It's like, you know. So I've had the privilege of working with some of the very, very best in the industry. I've worked with, uh, for example, Periscopics, arguably the best AdWords agency in Europe. A company so good that you cannot hire them because they're too busy. I've worked with even other web development companies like Morph from England, who took care of the front end of the first vehicle leasing site, for example, and I would do the back end. And you know what? We all got along fabulously. The relationship was harmonious. Everybody was cool. The site owners were cool. The IT people was cool. I was definitely cool. And millions were made. Maybe not by me, but the site was successful. This is what happens when you build a site that makes fortunes. Now, the thing is that over the last few years, there has been a problem that has emerged in this industry. And it's a problem that I've spoken about before on this channel. And unfortunately, unfortunately, it's a problem that has ca caused me to lose good clients. And today, I'm losing a good client. So the problem is, do you remember when I said that the site owner appears and says, here's Chico, Chico's the new whatever, SEO guy or something, here you go. Remember how I said that, right? That's fine, that's normal. It's a free marketplace, it's okay. But there's a certain type of small business owner and a certain type of IT company who have a different algorithm. Because what they do, and I'll say it from the perspective of the IT company, is they get a beautiful, dazzling domain name like web.com, for example, who stole two clients from me a couple of years ago with this, what I'm calling a scam. So they get this fabulous domain name, maybe even backed up with one or two great rumors of being amazing. Then they take the company and they franchise it. So they'll have representatives all over the globe representing that franchise company like uh, you know web.com for example i'm giving you names and addresses here folks and i hope you appreciate that right and what will happen is the owners of web.com i believe they're in america but you'll have some tosser from down in england phoning up clients of yours clients of mine and saying we're from web.com, we can make your site amazing. Now that's fine. They need to earn a living. And as George W. Bush said, you know, the hardest job in the world is to put food on your family. So that's fine. It's a free marketplace, bless them. But their business model is based on a formula, an incredibly simple formula. It's a formula that I've seen time and time again. And it's a formula that so far I have found impossible to compete against. Because what they do 
is they start a dialogue with the site owner. They are friendly, they are cheap, they are charming, and they are offering services that in no way impede upon the developer. They might get in touch and say, hey, have you thought about advertising on Facebook? And of course, the developer's like, nothing to do with me. And they'll start a little dialogue with the site owner. Now, you don't know about this because you're the developer, right? And then, as the dialogue goes on and you don't even know about it, one day, the salesperson, who has never written a line of code in his life, has an idea. The salesperson says, you know, would you like me to do a little review of your website? Just see if there's a few things that could potentially be improved. The site owner says, sure. Now at that moment, a line has been crossed. Because what then happens is, the locust, let's call them, talking about those IT professionals who work this way. The locust then uses total deception and says, you know, we're web.com, we've done such and such. Nothing of the kind is true. It's a franchise, you know. Probably couldn't even point to a, within a thousand miles of the, the main office. But the salesperson then spends three or four days producing these immaculate reports these reports will have statistics about page load speed, SEO ranking, site structure, you name it. And I do not care if your name is Brad Traversi. I don't care what you're, I don't care if you're Steph Mischuk. I don't care if you're the guy who invented the internet. They will look at your work and they will produce fabulous, dazzling reports that all say one thing. That guy is doing a bad job. Or well, that guy has done a bad job. And over the course of weeks and months, these people will persist. And in the background, without the web developer knowing it, these conversations go on, often for long hours. You do realize that we could do this. You do realize that we build shops. Have you thought about this? Did the developer not do it? Look at this. They didn't write the proper meta tags. Hey, here you've got some CSS. It doesn't even load up. That page takes four seconds or whatever. Who knows, right? I don't have pages that take four seconds to load, but you get the point. Now, when all this is going on, you, the developer, have no clue. You're working 12 hours a day and you're like, yeah, look at this, man. I got this feature working and it's like, yeah, this is great. And you're up day and night. You're doing the best you can. You're working with passion, operating at a high level, probably doing double the hours of the person within the organization who's working the most apart from you. And you're working away really, really happily. Everything's great and the sun is shining. You're building this multi-million pound empire. You feel great. But you know, for some reason, the site owner seems a little bit less friendly than normal. It's not that he's arguing. He's not saying anything bad. He's not insulting you. But, you know, he seems a little bit distant. Maybe... The site owner doesn't respond to emails as quickly as before. Maybe he has someone else answer the phone and take a message. And over time, there is a sort of freezing of the relationship between the developer and the site owner. The relationship becomes kind of cold. And as this is going on, the locust is in the shadows, gone. More reports, more critique. If only you could hire us. We, we can do you a whole site for, you know, one dollar a month. They always charge really low prices, right? And they keep on going, keep on going, until eventually, it's like being in a marriage and you've got somebody going up to your wife saying, you know, he's cheating on you, he's rubbish, you can do better than him, non-stop. 
And eventually, the relationship breaks down. Either the site owner has an outburst and says, I can do much better than you. Or the web developer says, I'm out of here, man. This is just not working. That's what happens. And if that story sounds familiar to any of you, I'm absolutely sure it does. Keep the focus away from me. This is not about Dave's a successful developer. I'm talking about a problem in this industry that nobody's talking about. If any of this sounds familiar, please let us know in the comments. I would love to see that. Now, this is a problem that is impossible for a developer to compete against. You cannot win. Think about it. How can you possibly compete against an opponent who is invisible, who doesn't even know about development, who's talking to a client who doesn't know about development either? In the case of web.com, they actually use their own in-house software to rate my work. They said, look, it only rates, I think it was 23% out of 100. When I found out about that, I was not meant to find out. Thankfully, I have insider contacts. There's a reason why my club was called the Insider Club, ladies and gentlemen. My insider contact told me everything. They had been going to the clients, two of them, and running the websites through their in-house software, giving it a score of, I think it was 23, might have been a wee bit more, out of 100. And I had no idea. Is it any wonder that the relationship I had with the client completely broke down? And funny thing is, when I found out, I decided to do a little analysis of their site. I found some software. It was not my software, ladies and gentlemen. No, 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 no. I don't need to do those types of tricks. I used Google's software, Google's site checking software. The results are on video, and as soon as I get 50,000 subscribers, I'm going to upload the results, and I'm going to take that company to the cleaners. There shall be ridicule and there shall be laughter because it turns out that they were scoring, I think it was 3%, and my own site that they set my own, the client site that I had built, was actually scoring upwards of 98%. This is the guy who gets the phone calls from SEO companies and other developers saying, how the heck do you score 99 or 100%? That's impossible. That's the phone calls I get. So I ran the tests with a neutral observer, Google, and it turns out that all of their stuff was just deception, total deception. Now, that's nice, and it's nice to be on the side of the light side, but nothing has changed. And when you build those sites for those small business owners, and I'm not being insulting, but that's what they are, right? Just what they are. This pathway appears to be increasingly common. And it's a huge problem in our industry. I addressed this problem quite recently by adding a message on the admin panel of every site that I build. And it's on the Get In Touch With The Developer page. And I wrote a message that explains briefly the problem. And all I say is, look, if somebody approaches you or anything like that, please talk to the developer first. Now, it's a free market. People can hire whomever they want. But to review a site and critique a site Often a site that's not even finished, without making any effort to contact the developer, without asking the developer any questions, without uh, giving the developer any opportunity to prepare or respond, without taking into account the developer's passion, the hours, the skill set, the commitment, the loyalty, without taking any of that into account, to sneak around in the shadows like a little rat 
doing that kind of thing is not only unethical, I think it's stupid. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, my written warning failed. Yesterday, I spent an entire... To anyone in Speed Coding Academy, I apologise for not uploading a video yesterday. I spent, turn the volume up, the entire day working for a client for free. I had not been asked. This was something I volunteered to do because my standard is I am the best. My reward for putting all those speed coders on the sideline so that somebody may have a chance. My reward was, hey Dave, I've been speaking to this company and they had a look at your site and they're going to make a few suggestions. Oh, and by the way, don't worry, they're only interested in AdWords or Facebook or whatever. Don't worry about that. They do actually build online shops, but you don't have to worry about that. Anyway, they're sending a report in on Friday. Cheers, Dave! That was the phone call I received yesterday. And is it any wonder that I have totally lost respect for that client? That client thinks that he is being some sort of genius, big thinking entrepreneur by just sneaking around in the dark like a little rat. That client thinks that if he hires somebody who does an exceptional job, then instead of rewarding that exceptional talent and recognizing it, and by the way, that can just mean, well done, right? I'm not looking for a share of somebody's business. But instead of recognizing that talent, the small business owner says, I'm going to hire another. And they think that they're being clever. Of course, what they are doing is a complete betrayal, a complete betrayal, and they are demonstrating to themselves and everybody else why they are small business owners. Therefore, I have created a new rule and I'm putting it on my YouTube channel. I think that, and I really gave this a lot of thought, if I hired somebody to build a kitchen and the person builds a kitchen and then either during or after the project the person hires somebody or let's say I, I'm, I'm okay start again I'm hiring somebody to build a kitchen right and at some point I sneak off and I get another kitchen fitter to review the work I would say that's reasonable actually that's kind of reasonable, right? So this is a really, really difficult thing, folks. And I have thought and meditated and reflected. This particular client, I, I'd spoken to him about, uh, about this on the phone about a month ago. I was like, I have this real problem. Let me tell you about it. And I gave him all the information I've given you. He's just gone and shafted me. What an idiot. This is a situation that is impossible for the developer. That makes it impossible for the developer to win. Take the focus away from me. Assume that I am the worst developer in the world. It's irrelevant. Assume that I'm the best developer in the world. Which I probably am. That's irrelevant as well. Because how can any developer possibly compete against a highly polished sales team who operate in the shadows covertly convincing dumbass site owners that the last guy did a bad job. I cannot compete against that. Brad Traversi cannot. Steph Mischuk cannot. Coding Phase cannot. Nobody, the guy who invented Node, cannot compete against that. You're done. And when they come knockety knock knocking on that client's door it's game over 
And let me tell you how this all ends. It ends with the developer either hanging about like some sort of badly abused mongrel. And ultimately, the developer has to leave, really. And then the site owner gets sold a bag of spanners. They get these really crap sites, usually like WordPress or Drupal. These garbage sites that are really cheap. And then six months down the line, the site owner gets really angry with the company, the locusts, because the site owner says, well, how come you guys aren't giving me much attention? And the locusts say, hey, man, you're only paying us 200 a month. What do you expect? That's what happens. So everybody loses. Fortunately for the developer, there are lots of other businesses out there, business owners, who are ready to hire developers. We'll be okay. As for the locusts, well, they have no shortage of suckers. They just need to pick a sucker, lift the phone, and away they go. In fact, in the case of this particular event, I believe that the site owner received some advice from a genius, a genius of the web who has made fortunes building applications for companies who are listed on the Dow Jones. Oh, hang on, no, that was me. I beg your pardon. He took advice from his son. Apparently, his son had recommended this company. So, the suckers are everywhere, waiting to get scammed. They'll phone up and say, hey, I've got this site, and my son recommended you. And they think that they're being geniuses. All they're doing is being small-minded idiots. They take the loyalty, the intelligence, the integrity, the hard work from those who have their best interests. They take the medicine of kindness and turn it into the venom of betrayal. With all things considered, I have made a decision. It will not be a popular decision. Some of you have already given this video a thumbs down and I don't blame you. But from now on, every single person who hires me or my agency. That's right, folks. I'm starting an agency. An agency of speed coders. But that's for another video. And anyone who hires me or my agency, they will not get one solitary line of code out of me or anyone who works with me. They will not get one line of code unless I have it in writing that they will not behave like backstabbing, small-minded, idiotic, small business owners. Specifically, this means I am not willing to work for, for anyone with immediate effect. I'm not willing to work for anyone unless I have it in writing. The moment you seek professional IT advice from somewhere else, all bets are off. All technical support has ended. All advice, all web development, all bets are off. This will be considered a serious violation of contract. This is my terms and conditions. And every single client who hires me until the day I retire, they will be sent a link to this video. And it may sound outrageous. What, you're, I'm not allowed to hire somebody for advice? Yep, I agree. Sounds outrageous. I totally agree. And that's a shame. But unfortunately, folks, I cannot find another way. You cannot, you know, my own skills, my own competence is irrelevant. It makes absolutely no difference whether I'm the best developer or the worst. I cannot compete against this type of business model. You cannot. It's a problem in the industry. So that's a new rule, folks. It's a new rule for me. I'm not working for anyone unless I have it in writing 
You don't talk to anyone until you talk to me first. Thank you very much for listening. And by the way, even though this sounds a bit grim, let me just say it's a fabulous, wonderful industry. I encourage you to do this. It's really great. I enjoy it. I'm smiling. I'm not some defeatist. Mm, look what they did to me. I'm not a victim. I'm, I feel great and life is good. So take it easy and uh, I'll catch you next time.